So the monks have been coming to the United States now for over 22 years. The very first World Peace Tour took place in 1989. This was shortly after His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama won the Nobel Peace Prize. Since that time, monks in the refugee settlements in India have been touring the United States on what we call World Peace Tours. This really is a twofold mission. One is to try to be a benefit to the communities we come to, um, showing some of the culture, the tradition, have some interfaith dialogue, and really promoting tolerance, peace, and compassion amongst all peoples, all shapes and sizes. The second part of the tour is one in which it creates funds in which we can preserve the Tibetan culture. Right now the Tibetan culture is really disappearing from the planet and in these refugee settlements in the south of India uh, the monastics as well as the Tibetan community are trying to preserve it but it's very difficult to do living in a foreign country. So these tours come to the west and as they share this ancient tradition uh, people also make donations and those donations go back to the refugee settlements and helps preserve this precious culture. The sand mandala that the monks have been creating here at Creighton University is one that's dedicated to green Tara. These sand mandalas are actually over a thousand year old tradition in Tibet. And it came up uh, from India when Buddhism did. And this ancient art form is one way in which we can create a sacred space to receive the blessings of enlightened beings. So the monks will work for four days creating this sacred space. And this one in particular to green Tara They've created on one level a symbolic representation of the celestial home of Tara. Actually, these mandalas have layers of meanings, inner, outer, and secret, and one can actually see the whole path to enlightenment if you know how to read it properly. But on one conventional level, it's a blueprint of the celestial home, and the monks create this sacred space with which we can invite Tara and all the enlightened beings of her mandala to inhabit this mandala and in this way receive blessings. So when it's complete, the monks will do a special ritual. They'll invite all these enlightened deities to become present, to inhabit and consecrate the mandala. Then it'll be ritually dissolved and swept up. At that point, the sand becomes very blessed and we hand it out to all the people that are here in attendance. And the rest of it we pour into a body of water, like a lake or an ocean or the river. In this case, in Omaha, we pour it into a river. And in that way, the sand goes out to the whole of the environment, blessing the whole area. So in that way, the mandala is not really destroyed. It takes a new form. It lives on and serves a higher purpose.
Name? Sange. Tange. <laughs> and kicking things and kicking things. <laughs> Nima. Geshila. <laughs> hmm? Dona. Dona. Okay. It's all about. I skipped six and seven today. So, Grandpa Chopel, tell us about Western monastics having grandchildren. <laughs> yes, this is true. I am a grandfather monk and uh, very fortunate. I have my second granddaughter just recently. And this is a little bit unique within Western monastic life because unlike um, our Tibetan counterparts or uh, people within Asia, where often they become monks very young, typically Westerners have lived a life. And then later, as an adult, they make a conscious decision to become a monastic. So most Western monastics come into this tradition much later in life. Often after having a family or um, career and so forth. In my case, uh, I came in right as my daughter was graduating the university and, and becoming married. So this was my uh, then opportunity to look at what was the meaningful part of my life. And uh, this Buddhist tradition was that for me. And I had this opportunity. I was still very young as I was a young father. And uh, so she graduated and I got her permission to go to India and get a new haircut and some clothes. Chopel, how long have you been a monk? I've now been a monk for six years. I was ordained in 2005. 